man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Greetings. Welcome. How you doing? Howdy, howdy. Glad you made it to be with us tonight. This is Pastor Sam May, Deliverance Bible Church, and we welcome you to our Wednesday night Bible study hour. We call it Word Alive. Word Alive is the title for this time that we spend together each Wednesday evening, and we're just so glad that you're with us this evening. Hey, we say it, if it's your first time, uh, we're glad you came by. If you're coming back again, we're glad you came back. Listen, uh, hit that share button, uh, text somebody, let them know that Delivers Bible Church is uh, on DBC Tacoma Facebook Live, and we're bringing you a word of God from the word of uh, God. Let them know from the word of God. Let them know that uh, God's word is going forth tonight. A word of encouragement, a word of hope, uh, how God wants us to live our lives before him. So we bless him for these times that he gives us together on these Wednesday evenings. We don't take this for granted. Uh, this is not something I was talking with my wife. We were talking just the other day. I think it was yesterday or last night. Is we don't we don't do God just to say we did it. Uh, this is not about having a checklist. You know, we did the Bible study whether we were there. No, we we do God because this is a call for us to do this, and it's a call for you and us to obey His word. So even in obeying Him, it's not a checklist. We do it. We're supposed to do it because we love him and it's a demonstration of our love for him. So this is not just the exercise we go through. We believe that God's word gives us direction and correction for life, how God wants us to live. So we, we, we just love these times we spend together on Wednesday nights to be able to share his word uh, with you. And uh, as somebody said, that as we talk to you, we talk to ourselves. So... Uh, as I'm teaching you, I've, I've been getting this myself because I got to get it and I got to be able to use it and I want to help you use it. That's why we want to try to um, go through God's word with you so that you would have a better understanding of how he wants us to do life. Our God's so awesome. Our God's so mighty. Another good day in him. Um, he brought us through, y'all. He brought us through. He got us through whatever the day was like. He got us through so we could be together this evening. So we bless him and we praise him. We praise him for that. Our God is awesome, God. Let, let's pray. God, we thank you again for your grace, your mercy, your God, your effective favor, you supplying exactly what we need when we need it. And we thank you tonight for this opportunity to be together again, together again, and to share your word, uh, to uh, talk of you and what you said to us about how you want us to be in life. So we thank you for that tonight, God. We thank you because you are a, a way maker, God. You, we are, you're a promise keeper. <laughs> you are light in the darkness, God. You're a miracle worker. You, you, you are great and greatly to be praised. And so we just want to bless your name tonight. We, we thank you for what you do in our lives. We thank you for how you love us. We thank you for just being God, just being God in our lives. And we get to call you Father. What a privilege it is to be able to call you Father. But we call you Father because your son Jesus grants us access to you by way of Calvary. At Calvary, he gave his life that we might have life in you. At Calvary, he died, but he didn't stay dead. He got up. And even as we call on you, he's our advocate and our intercessor sitting on your right hand side so we bless you tonight for being so good and so awesome in our lives i pray that somebody's head will be lifted tonight i pray a heart would be mended tonight god i pray that we would even be 
more determined to call on you, call on you, God, because you are a prayer answering God. So teach us tonight from your word and let us not be selfish in your word. Somebody else is going to need this word shared to them. Somebody not on this broadcast tonight is going to need this word shared to them. So I pray, God, as we learn, we tell others what we've learned and we always make you the focus of our telling because that's what you called us to do, to be a witness for you. So we bless you tonight and all you're going to show us. We bless you tonight for being so good and so kind. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, again, it's just so good to be back with you tonight. Um, <clears throat> We're still in the book of James. I, you know, we're still in the book of James and we're picking up again at chapter five. And the thing about tonight is, uh, as we go in, um, we're picking up on a subject matter that James actually started in our last session. The, the thing I, I wanted to uh, kind of reiterate to you is that um, when the writers of, of, of the scriptures, when they wrote, they didn't wrote, they did not write as books with chapters and verses in them, okay? They wrote uh, letters. They wrote letters to those uh, whom the Spirit moved them to write. Remember, the, the Scripture is inspired by God. Uh, no man came upon himself to write Scriptures, but the Spirit moved upon holy men of God to write what they wrote. So it was not the Bible as we know it today. Uh, the books are not, they were not books as we know it today. They were letters. And because of that, they did not have chapters and verses. And so they were just a, a letter written. And so I want to emphasize that as we come to the lesson tonight, because last last week we actually stopped off uh, kind of in the middle of what we call the verse, kind of in the middle of what we call the verse. Uh, but again, because it was not written as verses, there's, there's a flow that continues. Last week, we started talking about prayer. Last week, we started talking about prayer and James uh, continues to talk about prayer to us this week, but as a letter, we, we don't want to look at the break. We're not considering the break uh, in verse 16, uh, but we, we pinpointed it as a break because we had to get over to where we need to be tonight, okay? So uh, tonight we pick up at James chapter 5, verse 16, uh, for our purposes, starting at the B part of the second part of verse 16. Let me let me give this to you tonight. I think last time we just talked about pray. Tonight, I just want to talk about pray, 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 pray. The believer must be consistent and seeking God in prayer. One of the things that we talk about often and we mentioned, I believe, last week, if we didn't, uh, we'll mention tonight is, is prayer is, is something that God has given us to be in in communication with him, in communication with him, God expects us to pray. God wants us to pray. Uh, God wants us to call on him. So pray. Yes, pray. Yes, pray. Um, the thing is, that which should be a priority sometimes, uh, the enemy wants to keep it from being a priority. So prayer has to be a priority. The enemy will try to keep you from praying. The enemy doesn't want you to talk talk to God or talk with God because sometimes in praying you need to listen to see if God wants to impress something on your mind, if he has something he wants to say to you by impressing it on your mind, because prayer really uh, many times uh, should be a, a two-way communication uh, process. It's not just us going to God and telling him, telling him, telling him, telling him, but we need to be quiet sometimes. Matter of fact, sometimes you probably had this experience that you, you went to God in prayer and someone came to your mind, someone came to your mind that you did not have in mind when you went to prayer and you don't know exactly why they came to your mind, but you had to stop and pray for them because God wanted you to pray for them at that moment, at that time. So in prayer, we need to be sensitive to God speaking to us um, in our prayer time. And, but the issue is we, we got to pray. We got to pray. Um, someone once said, uh, no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little prayer, prayer, little power, much prayer, much power, however that thing would go. But the issue is we need to pray. Prayer needs to be a priority and the believer must be consistent in seeking God in prayer. Listen, uh, there, there are times uh, we need to be like Peter. Uh, Lord, help me. That 911 prayer, but that 911 prayer shouldn't be that. The, 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 uh, 
the, 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 the course of things. It shouldn't be par for the course. It shouldn't be what you, what, how you pray all the time. You need to pray other than a 911 prayer. And so with that in mind, let's go into uh, the scripture tonight and see what James teaches us about, about prayer. Pray, pray, pray. Uh, chapter uh, 5, 16b, the first part, I mean the second part, I'm sorry, is he says to us, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man or a righteous person, if you would, avails much. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just going to give you a couple points here. Listen, the prayer of the believer who orders his life by God's word is heard. The prayer of the believer who orders his life or her life by God's word is heard. It, it says the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man, righteous man. Now we know that we are, we are made righteous by Jesus Christ, by, because of what he's done on the cross. And we, salvation is ours. Those of us who accepted the finished work of Christ on the cross and, and cried out, we, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart God has raised him from the dead. God, God places righteousness on us. He makes us us righteous, not because of any acts that we've done, but he puts the righteousness of Christ on us. That's what the scripture says. He's made us righteous by Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, so this is not a performance uh, to be righteous. We, we are righteous, but here, here's the thing though. Uh, when it talks about a righteous person, is one who lives his life in conformity to the, to the will of God. And, and listen to this, uh, a righteous person, you are living out the righteousness that God has placed on you. You live your life in conformity to the will of, of God. See, God has a right way, the righteousness of man. The righteousness of God on us is the, God's right way, how he, he directs us to live. And we find that in his word. We, we find out how God wants us to live in his word. And he, here's, here, here's, here's another word for all that obedience obedience when we are obeying god we are we are practicing righteousness we are practicing what god has made us righteousness but that comes out of obeying god god has a way he wants us to live god says in the in his word isn't this god says in his word this is the right way to live before him his word gives us the right way to live before for him okay and so part of part of getting our prayers answers is we got to be living the way god wants us to live got to be living the way god wants us to live I, I got to go on listen 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 customize your life to god's word don't try to customize god's word to your life yeah somebody needs to get that oh i'm sorry i forgot to tell you the notes were on the on the uh, church page DBC Tacoma Facebook uh, church page. If you didn't get them, you can go get them because I'm, I'm just coming off of my notes. Customize, uh, customize, customize your life to God's word. That's called obedience. Okay. Don't try to customize God's word to your life. In other words, don't try to make God's word fit your lifestyle. Change your lifestyle to fit God's word. That's called obedience obedience okay you want to get your prayer your prayer answered the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man is 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 effective it avails much god hears that because you're living the life that he's called you to live now okay on the other side you're trying to customize god's words to your life uh, you know you can't and I, i've said this several times you can't live a jacked up life y'all know what i mean by jacked up life just doing any and all kinds of stuff and then expect God to be listening to what you got to say because God, God's not obligated to listen to all this stuff you talk to him about and, and you living jacked up out of his will. God's not obligated to be listening to all that, okay? So you, you, if you want your prayers answered, the first thing, the first thing is, the first thing is customize your life to God's word. Get into God's word. Know how God wants you to live. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, Submission to the Holy Spirit. Live the way God wants you to live. That's the that's the first thing He says here. He says the effective fervent prayer. And we're gonna we're gonna deal with a bit about effective fervent. Pray, 
but you got to be living your life because you want God to hear what you are what you are saying, okay? So he says that in, in verse 16b. Then uh, he, start, he starts by giving us, he, when we move to uh, verse 17, 517, he gives us uh, an example. He gives us an example, if you, will, uh, if you would, of this, this, this prayer life of a righteous man and how it avails much. He makes a statement first in verse 17. He says, uh, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Let me let me let me see if I can open that up a little bit. Uh, NIV says Elijah was a man just like us. By uh, the statement in your notes says, Elijah had human weaknesses and infir- infirmities just as we have. Okay, just as we have. Now listen, listen, listen. Elijah, the prophet Elijah, Elijah the Tish, Tishbite. He was he was called Elijah the Tishbite. We'll read that in a minute. Um, when we read about uh, the things he did, he was he was used greatly of God. He was a bold spokesman, spokesman for the Lord. He was bold. He he was used greatly of God. But listen to this: Elijah was not a super saint. He was not a super saint. Um, he, he had the same nature in ours. He had weaknesses and infirmities just as we have. So while we see him as a bold man of God, proclaiming God's word, and we'll read a little bit, a little bit of that in, in, in a few minutes here. While we see that, we got to remember he was like us. He had infirm, infirmities and he had weaknesses just like us. Uh, there's, go back. I think I put the note here. I got this note right. Go back and read First Kings chapter 19. Don't go now. Don't go now. Go back and read it later. Let me just kind of give you an overview of verse of, of chapter uh, 19, First Kings chapter 19. Uh, we uh, he had weaknesses and infirmities just like us. He he uh, uh, at, at a point when he met up with the evil queen Jezebel, she said she was going to kill him. He feared and ran for his life. Fear. Fear. Elijah, you go back and read through 19. He got depressed. Okay. He felt like he felt like he had failed. He felt like he had failed God. He says, I, I, I don't, he's to the point where he said, God, I, I'm not worth living anymore. He asked God to take it because I have failed. I failed you. He was ready to give up on life. There's people around us today who feel like they're failures. There's people around who feel like they, they ready to give up. He was, he was even, listen, he even got delusional. Listen, y'all, he even got delusional. Uh, when God was talking to him, he said, God, he said, God, you know, things are so bad. He said, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left who, who, who's tried to be, be, be faithful to you. I'm the only one left who tried to walk in your way. And God had to straighten him out on that. He said, no, wait a minute. Hold on. I got 7,000. Uh, uh, I got 7,000 folk who have not bowed the knee to bow. Be careful when you think you're the, you're the only one. But, but listen to this. Listen to this. He, he had to deal with the same issues of life that we deal with. He had infirmities and he had weaknesses just like we, just like we have. He was subject to the same stuff. He was subject to being tired and, and feeling like a failure. He was subject to having thoughts of depression. He was he was subject to have thoughts of, of, of delusions of the mind. He was subject to all that stuff. Just like us. Listen, let me tell you something t- today. Let me let me impress this on your mind. Nobody, no matter how long they've been walking in the, in, the, in the Lord, nobody is immune from issues. Nobody is immune from stuff. We keep saying this over and over again. I, come, I said there are no super saints. Just because God is using somebody in a mighty way, that don't mean they don't have struggles. And anybody who presents himself as somebody who doesn't have struggles, I, 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 I can't, I can't rule with that because all of us, all of us got, got, got something. All of us have to deal with the issues of life. Boldly used by God, yes, but that does not not immune us from having issues in life and trials in life and difficulties in life. And yes, we can feel like failures. We can feel like we miss. That's part of life. Elijah. Hmm. He was a great man of God, but Elijah, 
had a nature like ours. Elijah fought with stuff. Elijah went through stuff just like we go through. So when you're going through stuff and there's difficult times, don't think this is just about me. Other folk going through stuff just like just like you. Elijah had a nature like ours. However, however, when you get to the rest of verse 17, it says, and he prayed earnestly. He had issues. He had all this stuff going on that I told you about uh, 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 in chapter 19. But it said, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. The literal, literal Greek reads here, and he prayed in prayer. That is, he was persistent in prayer. <clears throat> okay. He was persistent in prayer. All the stuff that was going on around him, he yet remained. He was able to be persistent in, he was persistent in prayer. And James tells us that when he prayed persistently, when he prayed and he talked to God, uh, that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. This brought about a drought on the land. All the land, about about a drop on the land. But let's let, let's look at this. Let's look at this then at this this thing of him praying. Uh, go if you would to First Kings chapter seventeen. I want to read. I want to read the verse first verse there. Okay, First Kings uh, chapter seventeen, uh, verse one reads like this: And Elijah the Tishbite, yeah, the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, he's talking to Ahab now, Ahab, the evil king, Ahab uh, was Jezebel's uh, husband. And the scripture said that Ahab was evil and Jezebel uh, motivated him to do more evil. In other words, they, they, both of them was evil, but Jezebel, in this case, she motivated him to be even eviler. Okay. Eviler, more evil. Okay. More evil. Okay, so they, they were a pair. Okay, so he's talking here to Ahab. He says to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor rain these years except at my word. Now, listen, uh, James, under an under, understanding the Holy Spirit comes and he says in, uh, 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 in James, he says it was three and a half years. A, 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 uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Elijah says these years, but James gives us understanding that it was three and a half years. And he says, except at my word, he, he makes this declaration. He makes this declaration to the king. There's going to be a drought, a drought. In this case, it was a, whenever it was a drought like that, there was part of God's judgment on the land. When God sent the drought is because of uh, really Ahab and Jezebel was leading the people the wrong way, all this other stuff. So the drought on the land was to get their attention. So he makes this statement to the king in verse one, it's not going to rain uh, or do uh, on the land for these years, except at my word. What a, what a, what a bold statement for him to make that it's not going to rain. But what happens is again, James gives us insight that we don't necessarily get in our uh, first Kings chapter 17. James says to us that, uh, before, listen to this, before, uh, uh, this statement is made by Elijah in 171 uh, first Kings. He said he prayed, he prayed. Now uh, we, we don't necessarily see, uh, we don't see in first Kings where uh, that, that uh, Elijah prayed before he made the statement, but that's not unusual because we do see things in, in scripture, in new Testament that gives us insight and stuff that happened in the old Testament, but the old Testament doesn't really spell it out for us. Um, we see, for instance, we see in the, in the new Testament, we just saw this in, in our, our sessions on Sunday mornings that when Abraham, uh, went to offer Isaac as a sacrifice, uh, it says that he was, he was ready to make him a sacrifice because God had said, come go take your son, kill him, worship me. I want your son. And, uh, but the new Testament tells us the Hebrew writer says that the reason Abraham was willing to do it. Abraham knew God had to keep his word and Abraham figured that even if he, even if he killed his son, God was going to have to raise him up. Why? 
because the promise would have to go through Isaac. We don't, we don't get that in the scene that we see in Genesis 22 about him about to offer his son, but there's clarification, listen to me, there's clarification in the New Testament meant about what went on with Abraham. The scripture says that when uh, uh, Moses slew the Egyptians, when he slew the Egyptians, uh, it comes into the New Testament, and the New Testament said the reason uh, Moses slew the, slew the Egyptian when he did it he thought that the Hebrews would understand that he was going to be their deliverer. Now, it doesn't tell us that in the Old Testament, but we get the clarification in the New Testament. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say to you is that when James makes this statement that he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, we don't see in 17, uh, 1 Kings 17, where the prayer was, but James gives us clarification. Listen, before... Before Elijah could make this statement boldly to the king that he prayed. That's all I'm trying to say to you. That's all I'm trying to say to you. So he clears it up uh, in, in the text in 17 and 1 first Kings. It doesn't say how long it says, nor these years. And in James writing, he says it was three years and six months. So we get some clarification, but don't miss the whole thing. Don't miss the whole thing. He prayed the fervent prayer of a righteous man uh, availeth much. He prayed and he was able to make this statement because Elijah prayed. In other words, he just didn't get up and make something up. He prayed and then he made the statement. So why could, how could he make the statement after, how could he make the statement? Because he prayed first. He, the boldness that he had to make the statement came because he's prayed. He prayed. Listen to this. Listen to this. Uh, uh, in Matthew chapter six, in Matthew chapter six, in Matthew chapter six and six, Jesus uh, is uh, going to do a teaching on prayer. He's going to do a teaching on prayer. We know later, just a few verses down, he, he does what's called the Lord's Prayer. It's really the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray the template. But anyway, in Chapter six, verse six, he says, but you, when you pray, go into your room, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place, who is there with you. He's there. And your father who sees in secret will reward you open, did, openly. Did you catch that? There's, 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 it's called closet praying, Clo going in you and God all alone. Okay. You and God all alone. We need to have some, you need to have some, you and God all alone prayer, just you and him. Just again, Jesus teaching, he's teaching when you pray, go into, go into your room. Okay. You need to have a place. Uh, you need to have a place where you can go. No distractions. Okay. Uh, and the only, the only thing on the agenda is prayer. Only thing on the agenda is prayer. He says, when you go and you shut, shut the door, I mean, shut everything out, shut, shut everything out. Don't take your cell phone with you. Okay. Don't, don't the TV, don't have the TV on. Okay. All this other stuff you, you shut out. You, you might have to, if you family, whatever you might, you got to find, you should find a time when everybody's not stirring. A lot of people suggest that you have prayer in the morning with God to start your day with him. So that might mean that you got to get up before everybody else gets up. However, it works out. You need to have some time alone with God. Jesus modeled time alone with God. He got up sometimes early in the morning and he went and prayed by himself to God. He, he had did a miracle of, of, of feeding the 5,000 men plus women and children. And, um, he sent his disciples off in a boat and then he sent the people away. Then it said, he went up to the mountain alone to pray. You need, we, I need, we need quiet time. We need some time along alone with the father, just one-on-one or just one-on-one -on -one prayer time, quiet time with God. That's, that's so needed in our lives. Let me stop there. Cause I'm going off into, I don't, I, I don't want to go. Okay. Anyway, listen, 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 listen. He says, with your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. We reward you openly. So what could we, what could we pick up? Listen, what could we pick up? We could pick up here that in the case of Elijah, Elijah has spent some time with God before he made the statement. 
before he boldly proclaimed, because he says here, he says here, as the Lord God of Israel lives before uh, whom I stand, there shall be no dew nor, dew nor rain on uh, no rain these years except at my word. He, but he did say, as the Lord God of Israel lives. Notice who he started out with. Notice who he started out with. Jesus said, when you go into your closet, pray. Listen, let me give you, let me give you the thing. Let me, let me give you this. Let me give you this. Time spent with God in prayer will be obvious to others. Time spent with God in prayer will be obvious to, to others. Listen, you, you, uh, <clears throat> you don't have to be walking around talking about how much praying you're doing. You don't have to walk around talking about how long you be in prayer and, and all these other things in prayer. No, no, no. If you if you are truly spending time alone with God in prayer, it will be obvious to others. It will because it will impact how you live your life. It will impact uh, how you do your business, how you handle your business, y'all. You know, you don't have to be going funny on folk and carrying on if you're really spending time with God in prayer because that helps get you prepared for the day. It will be obvious. God, yeah, it will be obvious when you spend time. God, it 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 it, it can set the tone for the day. It can set the environment, a mental, emotional environment for you for the day. And so stuff is coming up. You handle stuff differently than other folk can handle it. Why? Because you've been spending time with God in in prayer prayer spent uh, time spent with god in prayer uh, will be obvious to others as a matter of fact jesus spent so much time praying at one point his disciples said to him teach us to pray the way god uh, the way uh, john uh, taught his disciples to pray he taught him that prayer, that what we call the, the Lord's Prayer, the, the Our Father Prayer. But his disciples said, teach us to pray. We, we, we send some stuff here. And we, want, we want to pray. We want to know how to pray. But you got to spend time with God. It will impact your life. It will impact your life. Spending time with prayer. Elijah uh, spent time. James says he prayed. He prayed and then he made the proclamation. He got the boldness to make the proclamation because he had he had prayed. He had prayed. He had spent time with God. We got to spend, spend time, spend time with God. Time spent with God in prayer will be obvious to others. I got to go on. I got to go on. Verse 18. So, 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 uh, verse 17 says, uh, um, um, Elijah man was a man with nature like ours, and and he prayed a right boldness for God. I'm sorry, I missed this one. A right boldness for God comes from spending time with God. A right boldness, because when he spoke to the king, he was bold. But that came from him spending time, spending time with God. So time spent with God in prayer will be obvious to others. You don't have to. People, listen, Captain. People, I, how can I say this? People who want to brag on themselves about how much time they spend in prayer. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to impress you. They're trying to impress you. So so just 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 be aware of that people who are spending time in prayer with God don't have to tell you how long they've been praying. Don't have to go through all that stuff. It'll just show up. It'll just show up. So beware of people who try to who are just over overly, you know, I spent all this time, I spent all these hours, you know, I prayed last night, I spent two hours in, in prayer before all this other stuff. And they probably they probably got down to pray and they went to sleep and they woke up uh, an hour and fifty nine minutes later talking about thank you, Lord, amen. But anyway, be aware. Be aware of people who are always trying to impress you with how long they, they they spend in prayer. Let me let me let me let me go here. Verse 18, 518. Let's come back. Let's go come back. 5 and 18. Let's come back, y'all. Um verse 18 says, James 5:18 says, And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Oh my goodness. Um it says in 17:1. Uh, first Kings that he 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 said he said no rain is gonna fall. Okay, James said he prayed, and verse 
uh, 1 of chapter 18, 1 Kings, it says, And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. In the third year it came. Go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. Watch this. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain on the earth produced and, and the earth produced its fruit. 1 Kings 18 and 1 says, listen to this, and it came to pass after many days, we haven't got to the prayer yet, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on the earth. This was in the third year. Remember James told us that it didn't rain for three and a half years and now it's in the third year. It's getting into the the three and a half is in the third year. God comes to a, uh, to Elijah and says, um, go present yourself to Ahab, the, the wicked king. I told you about Ahab and Jezebel already. And, and tell him that I'm going to send rain on the earth. So what happens is you read this in verse one, but there's some stuff that goes, listen, there's some stuff that goes on between verse one and where we're going to get to. Okay, let me just give you a, a, a short a short tour, tour here. Uh, Ahab has a, con I'm sorry, Elijah has a conversation with Obadiah, Obadiah, who was a, another man of God. Ahab, um, um, Ahab is confronted by Elijah. Elijah has a conversation with Ahab and it don't go real well. Okay. Um, Elijah calls down fire on Mount Carmel. He meets, he is a passage that many of us are aware of when uh, he's there and the prophets of Baal are there, the priests of Baal are there. And he says, y'all, you, you got to make up your mind. If God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, Baal serves him. So he challenges them to call on their God. So he says, y'all go first. Y'all call on Baal. They built the altar. They called on Baal. And it said that they screamed, they babbled, they did all kinds of stuff and they cut themselves. And he began to make fun of them and, and laugh and laugh at them along the way. They said, he might not hear you. Maybe he's uh, taking care of some business and he can't, he, he can't come to you right now, whatever it is. So they did this all day long. And so uh, after they got through, uh, Elijah built the altar and he put a whole bunch of wood all the, on the altar and he called for them to pour water on the altar. They poured water on the altar. He said, pour more water on the altar, pour more water on the altar. I think it was about three times he said to them, pour more water on the altar. And after that, it, the, the scripture said that the altar got so full that the water fell down into the trench that was around around the altar. It was it was just water everywhere. And he called on God from heaven and he said, let fire come down uh, and consume this altar. And the, and the scripture said that the fire came down from heaven, came down from heaven and it lapped up all the water. The water, the fire was so intense, it lapped up all the water around the altar and it burned up the altar. God proved himself uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Elijah, but he also proved himself to be the real God because only fire could come down from heaven and burn it, burn everything up. And he took the, the, um, he took the priest out and he slew them and everything. So all that happens, all that happens between verse one here and then to get to verse, uh, 41, first Kings 18 verse 40, verse 40, um, verse 41 and let me give you let me let me give you the i'm gonna give you this one ahead of time because if you got the notes you see it there um elijah per persistently prayed god's word back to him until he saw the manifestation of god's word i'm gonna give you that because i want to make sure i get that in y'all know how i get some time uh, verse 41 verse 41 then elijah said to ahab go up eat and drink for there is a sound of abundance rain that's been three years over three years it hasn't rained he makes this statement, go up, there's a sound of abundance rain. It says, uh, so Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. He went up to the top of the mountain, and he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees. The, the, the uh, picture here 
is uh, the position of a, a pregnant woman who's about to give birth. Uh, in those days, they didn't have um, they they didn't have the medicine technology and all the stuff we have today. They didn't have uh, uh, birthing suites. I, I I was just amazed at how far uh, medicine and, and doctors have come and stuff and babies giving birth. Um, you could have a birthing suite now. Um, you know. Since COVID, you know, you can have a birthing suite and it used to be just a doctor and the nurses would be in. And then at one point, uh, it used to be doctors and nurses would be. Then at one point they let the husband come in. But they, now with a birthing suite, this is a, this, a suite. It's a, you know, it's got, you can have music. You can have other people in your family in there uh, and all that stuff. They didn't have that in those days. They didn't have uh, the doctors um Push, push. They didn't have what's that thing? Epidurals in those days, you know, where if the pain was too great. No, it was it was a position. It says here that he bowed down the ground and put his face between his knees. That was a birthing position. That was where the midwives would come along. That's why midwives are so important because the midwives would come along and they would catch the baby as he came out. This was a position, a birthing position for uh, uh, the women who were pregnant, but when he does this, what he does is when he bows and puts his face between his knees, what he's doing is he's praying. He's praying. He's lowered himself into a birthing position as a woman would be in, but he is, he is, he is praying. It says he's bowed to the ground, put his face between his knees, and then he said to his servant in verse 43, go up now, look towards the sea, so he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. There is nothing. And it says, and seven times he said, go again. Listen to this. Listen to this. What was Elijah doing? He was seeking God's word to be manifest. That's what he was seeking. He knew God had already said that I'm going to cause it to rain. So he declared to Ahab, it's going to rain. You better get go go eat whatever. It's going to rain. But what he does now is in this position that he is in, he's seeking somebody. He's praying through, if you would, okay, to see the manifestation of God's word. And please notice what happens. He tells his servant, go look. The servant says, I don't see anything. He tells the servant, go back again. He says, I don't see anything. It says, and seven times he said, go again. Seven times he gives him the same instructions. He's praying. He, he's being persistent. He's, he's bowing. He's in a birth position, almost like he wants his prayer to be birthed out. OK, so he's in this position and seven times each time he says, go look. And the servant says, I don't see anything. But guess what he does? He goes back in the prayer again. So he prays the first time. He says, go look. He don't see nothing. He goes back. He prays again. He says, go look. The third time he goes back and prays again. He says, go look. Ain't nothing there. The fourth time he prays again. He says, ain't nothing there. The fifth time, the sixth time. He does this for seven times like he's he wants wants to birth the word of God out. He's praying what God said. He's praying what God said. Then it came to pass the seventh time, seven, uh, seven is a number uh, of completion. Seven is a number of completion in the Bible that he said, the servant said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. What, what, what did Elijah do? He kept praying until the manifestation of God's word became evident. Why? Because God has said, I'm going to cause it to rain. He told Ahab, get ready. It's going to rain. And what did he do? He got busy praying that God's word would be manifest. Man, there would be a manifestation of God's word. He had, but he kept on praying. Listen to this. In other words, he didn't give up after the first and second time. Uh, he said, there's a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. In other words, this, this is going to be a downpour. We see it here in the next verse. Now it happened in the meantime that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a, 
a heavy rain. There was a heavy rain. Okay, listen to this. Listen to this. Elijah continued to pray for rain until his servants servant reported a cloud the size of a man's hand. It, there was nothing there at first. Nothing there at first. And the cloud was so far away. You know what? Listen, you know when things are far away, they look small. You ever, you ever notice that? When things are far away, they they look small. Uh, when you when you're flying sometime, when you're flying sometime, uh, and you've probably done this already, um, if you fly, when you fly, uh, and you look down on the ground, stuff down on the ground looks small. Buildings look small. How everything looks small, you know what? Because it's far away. But the closer you get, the the better view you get of the size. The better view you get of the size, the closer you get. The the the, the servant said. It's, it's a cloud, but it looks the size of a man's hand because it was far away. It was far away, but look, it was on the way. And sometimes in God's plan for our lives, as we're praying, things seem far away, but guess what they are? They are on, they are on the, they are on the way. But Elijah kept on praying until the manifestation of what God had said became a reality. He prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed, he prayed. And then on the seventh time, what God had promised, God was bringing it to, to pass. He earnestly prayed God's word back to him until he saw the manifestation of God's word. Listen, I'm going to leave you, give me just a minute or two, I'm going to leave you alone. Uh, listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Matthew 7, 7 through 8, talking about prayer, talking about persistent prayer. Matthew 7, 7 through 8, uh, Jesus said, Action will be given to you, seeking you will find, knocking it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. Let me give you the tense of this, of this verse. He's saying, uh, ask or keep on asking and it will be given to you. Seek, keep on seeking and you will find. Knock is keep on knocking and it will be open to you. It's an ongoing, it's an ongoing. This is not just a one time, not just a one time. It's ongoing. He said, for everyone who keeps on asking uh, will receive and he keeps who keeps on seeking will find and he who keeps on knocking it will be open i hope you caught that i hope you caught that remember elijah went back elijah went back elijah went back okay and he prayed god's word back to him he prayed it back he prayed it back till he saw the manifestation jesus is keep on asking keep on seeking Keep on knocking. That's what Elijah does. Every time, every time he took that position again, he was asking, he was seeking, he was knocking every time. So that was six times, seven times, seven times because he, he kept going back. He kept going back. Every time he was asking, he was seeking, he was knocking. He was waiting on God to answer what God said he was going to do. It was, listen, it was no, not so much as God answering Elijah. It was God answering what God said he was going to do. And Jesus says, Jesus says, Jesus says, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. In other words, don't give up, don't give in. Don't, don't give up, don't give in, don't give out. Jesus told us in uh, Luke 18 and 1, he said, men should always pray and not lose heart. Men should always pray and not lose heart. Men should keep on praying and not lose heart. There's a persistency we got to have. We, we yes we got to be walking in God's will yes we got to be seeking his way for our lives but we need to be persistent persistent in seeking God in prayer persistent in seeking God and bringing his word back before him listen we we got to have a God you said and I'm not talking about you know some of the stuff we talk about today with everything see uh, uh, mm, 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 mm. some of us had willed it down to whatever I asked God for he got to do no it's got to be in his will 
It's got to be in his will. His word is in his will. So you got to know what the will of God is by knowing what the word of God is. And you keep bringing that back to God. God has promises for your life. And you have to be persistent. You have to keep going back. Jesus said, keep on seeking. Keep on asking. Keep on seeking. Keep on knocking. Jesus said, Jesus said, men should always pray. Don't give up. If it's God's word, keep, listen, keep God's word before him. And the way you keep God's word before him is you got to know God's word. You got to know God's word for yourself. You got to know what God has said. Elijah knew what God has said. So he just, he was in a birthing position waiting for it to happen. Waiting for it to happen. But he kept going back. He kept going back. Uh, listen to this. Warren Wiersbe said, too many times we fail to get what God promises because we stop praying. We give up. We give in, we give out. We it is taking too long. I I you know we we just see we are in we are we talked about this before. We are a, a people most impatient, impatient. You know James talked to us before about being patient, but we are, we are a lot of impatient folk. I told you before we want everything right now. We want it right now. As a matter of fact, most of it we want it yesterday. Okay, but he says here to us, pray, pray, pray. Look at Elijah. Elijah was not a super saint. Elijah was a man just like us. He had infirmities. He had weaknesses. He 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 got tired. He 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 felt like he had he had he had failed God. He was ready to give up on life. He was delusional. All this, but he prayed. And there's something about prayer. There's something about prayer. There's something about talking to God. There's something about bringing God's word back to him. There's a humility in it. There's a dependence in it. There's, there's faith in it. There's obedience in it. And knowing God is, is always true to his word. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give out. God, you know what? God, you said. God, you said you you and that's why you got to have you some verses where God made a promise to you. One of my favorite ones I uh that I, I find myself defaulting to a lot, especially you know, when stress and stuff come, life gets a little God, you said in your word in Philippians 4 and 6 that I should be anxious for nothing, but by prayer, worshiping you and supplication, uh praying to you, I can make my requests known to you with thanksgiving. Thank you that you're listening. Thank you that you're the one that can do something about this. Thank you that you're concerned uh, for me. He said, with, with thanksgiving, make your request be made known to God. And verse 7 says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. What was going on in your emotion and your thinking? God, that's a promise to God. That's, that's a promise God has made. And so you take that back to him and say, God, you said you said that I could have a peace that passes all understanding. Your peace. Can't explain it, but you, you get, I hope somebody's catching this. Pray his word back to him. Be consistent. Be consistent. God, you said that when trouble come, I don't have to fear because you will walk with me. God, you said that you will walk with me through the fire, through the flood. The waters won't overtake me. And I, when the fire, when I go through the fire, I won't be burned. That's the promise of God. Because when life comes at you hard and difficult, God says, I'm with you. But you got to trust him in his word that he's with you. It's not that he's going to just make stuff go away. But the promise is he'll be with it through you. So you got to have that word. And you got to depend on God's word. When you're in that thing, God, you say, said persistent prayer persistent prayer that's what god is calling for from us take his word back to him and trust him god god has to keep his word god has to keep his word he binds himself to his word he said his word will not go from him and come back void but it would accomplish the purpose that he sends it to to do and you got to trust that and you got to be like Elijah. Pray. Wait up. Pray. When you don't see it, pray some more. I know there's a teaching. There's a teaching uh, out there that says, well, just pray about it one time and leave it alone. I, I, don't, I, I haven't found that yet. Jesus said, keep on praying. Jesus said, always pray. And don't give up. I haven't found to pray one time, leave it alone. Even when Paul was wrestling with the thorn in his flesh, he prayed three times until he got an answer from God. Okay, so we are, keep on praying, keep on seeking, keep on trusting in prayer. Make prayer a priority. 
God knows you weak. God had God knows you have infirmities, but He He loves you anyhow. He wants you to come to Him. He wants you. His desire is that you bring His word back to Him. Father, you said, I'm, I'm leaning to depend on you and, and I'm trusting you. You said no weapon formed against me shall prosper and the enemy is busy right now. But I know that I am more than a conqueror in Christ, Christ Jesus. I know that you and I are a majority. It doesn't matter who's against me because you are with me. God, you said that in your word. So I'm trusting your word. I am taking you at your word. And my hope is in you. My trust is in you. My faith is in you. Times are not good right now, but you promised to be with me in these difficult times. So I'm leaning and depending on what you said to me. God, take his word back to him. Take his word back to him. That's what Elijah did. And he stuck with it until he saw what God told him in his word. He saw it in life. He saw the manifestation of God's word because that's what God does. He brings his word. He brings his word to pass. He brings his word to pass. So don't stop praying. Don't, 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 don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. God might not do it right away, but the promise is there. He, he keeps his word. The promise is there. He keeps his word. And see what prayer does is prayer will keep you focused on him. See, prayer is about focusing on God. Prayer is about focusing on God. So keep your focus on him. He'll bring his word to pass, but make sure you keep your focus on him. Pray, pray, pray. Bow with me if you would. Father, thank you for your word. Um, I, I pray that you would grant us even better understanding of your word. And you want us to bring your word back to you. There are so many promises that we miss. There are so many promises that we don't see. We give up. We, uh, the devil uh, tries to make us uh, uh, give up on you. The devil wants us to make, make us not trust you. He wants us to doubt you. But help us to remember whatever it is you promise. <laughs> you promise never to leave us nor for, forsake us. Thank you for that. You promise strength, oh God, in time of weakness. We, we thank you. Whatever it is, we know that we are conquerors in Jesus Christ. So we bless you for your word tonight. Thank you. You're awesome and you're mighty. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, bless you again for uh, being with us tonight. And we have a rest of good evening. Enjoy your evening. Remember, keep looking up and don't forget to pray.